from the Toronto studios. This is Muslim News on Muslim Network Television. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your host, Saleh Hafarouk. First, we begin with the headlines. The world is set to ring in another pandemic Christmas. Hunger in the United States on the rise as pandemic relief dries up. The UK, Spain, and Italy report highest number of daily COVID cases since the pandemic began. Biden signs law beginning imports from Uyghur region in China. Calls for Muslim genocide at Hindu religious assembly. And our top story tonight, billions of Christians are set to celebrate another pandemic tinged Christmas. Here is Archbishop Pierre Battista Pizzabala, Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem. He is arriving at the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem, occupied Palestine, on Christmas Eve. Celebrations begin at the Church of the Nativity, revered as the site of Jesus Christ's birth in Bethlehem. Palestinian scouts march in front of the Church of the Nativity in the biblical city of Bethlehem. Rula Maya, Palestinian Minister of Tourism and Antiquities, lamented on yet another Christmas without tourists. Uh, also for the uh, second year, we're uh, celebrating Christmas uh, without pilgrims, without tourists from all over the world. I hope that uh, very soon uh, we will be able to receive uh, tourists from all over the world, uh, pilgrims from all over the world. A rare visitor, Hudson Harder, shared his thoughts of Christmas in the Holy Land. So coming from the United States, um, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, but it feels a little bit like, a, like you can still feel some of the Christmas spirit. It's a bit of a mix of like an Arab and like a Western Christmas. And um, you definitely see some of the advertisements that towards Western tourists, but um, it's just not very many of us here. So it's just kind of strange, you know? Muslims believe in Jesus, but not many of their Christian neighbors know about it. Here is a Muslim news report. Christians and Muslims are cousins in faith. God says Muslims and Christians are people of the book. Christians and Muslims also share some beliefs. They also share the love of Jesus and Mary. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim until he believes and respects Jesus. Muslims don't mention Jesus' name without saying peace be upon him, as they say when they mention the name of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Here is Mustafa Ekyol, a Turkish writer expressing what Jesus means to Muslims. So let's talk about uh, what uh, what is Jesus in Islam. I um, mean, uh, we, we we went into discussion about Christianity and Jesus, uh, but the main thing is uh, that how Muslims believe what what Muslims believe Jesus is, and how Quran uh, mentions Jesus. So tell us something about that. In Hebrew, the term "Son of God" was used in the sense that sometimes we call. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Khalilullah, you know, the friend of God. Like it was not that somebody is divine, but a son of God would be somebody that God loves and elevates. So in Hebrew, there's a usage like that. That was before Christianity. So there are some Islamic scholars in the earlier centuries who said, if Christians mean son of God in that sense, m maybe we can discuss that. But of course, if you use the term son of God to say he is God incarnate, which is what main Christianity says, that is not acceptable from an Islamic point of view. Jesus was blessed with a lot of miracles, such as curing people's illnesses and raising the dead. Even his birth itself was miraculous by his mother, Virgin Mary. Mary herself is set very highly in Islamic tradition. She is mentioned in the Quran more times than she is mentioned in the Bible. In fact, the Holy Qur'an has a whole chapter dedicated to her. Here is Professor Francis S. Clooney from Harvard discussing Mary. And then you uh, went on discussing Mary, uh, peace be upon her. So, uh, so, so why you went uh, straight for Mary in the Qur'an? Well, I think as you said so eloquently at the start that um, 
Maryam is is so important in the Quran. She's named in the Quran. I hadn't actually counted, but you may be right that she's more mentioned in the Holy Quran than she is in the New Testament, which would be very eye-opening for most Christians. But it seemed to me that uh, it's in, inseparable uh, when we think of Christmas to think of Jesus and to think of his mother, Mary. That the, this is one reality of uh, the sacred teaching that the angel Gabriel came down and spoke to Mary, and then she conceived the Holy Child. And that to understand the mystery of Jesus is to understand Mary. And in the Surah 19, which you referred to, Mariam, I found that there was such a fresh and, and poignant teaching about who Mary is, that to understand who Jesus is, we have to understand Mary. And if we want to open our minds, therefore, to learn from the Holy Quran about Mariam, Mary, was a perfect way to start. There is, however, a critical difference. Muslims are told by God that he has no children and that Jesus is not God. God says Jesus was born miraculously as Adam was born. Here is Congressman Mark Siljander talking about the difference. So, but the main major difference comes in when uh, uh, Jesus is being discussed. I mean, uh, I mean, I will not be a Muslim unless I believe in Jesus uh, and other prophets. But we consider him a prophet, uh, not uh, God uh, himself, and we worship uh, the one which we believe Jesus worship. So, how Jesus is treated differently in Bible and the Quran? Uh, I honestly don't see it, and we don't have time to get into it, but I'll give you an example. I was with uh, lecturing at a all-women's Islamic college, and they all were is conservative. They all wear black, some hijab and others, you know, the full burqa. And they asked me to lecture on Jesus in the Quran. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> I said, now, ladies, I can do this in 40 seconds. Ladies, you know that Jesus in the Quran gave life to the better life to the sick, the blind, and the leper. And they said, yes, with the permission of Allah. I said, yes, and he raised the dead. Yes, with the permission of Allah. And they're all nodding their head. And he actually created clay birds with his hands and breathed his breath, his ruh. And these birds became living beings. Yes, he did have the permission of Allah. And the Quran says he is the Messiah, the word of God, the spirit of God. He said, yes, this is all with the permission of Allah. So, well, let me tell you what the gospel said. Jesus said in the gospel, he said, I only do what Allah, that's the Aramaic, tells me to do and say what he tells me to say. And all permission was given to me to do these unbelievable miracles that are reserved mostly for God. I mean, who can breathe? Only Allah breathed on clay to create Adam in the Quran and the Bible. So he had these uh, re remarkable gifts given to him. And he, he said, yes, Allah gave these all to me. And they were shocked. They said, are you sure the Bible says that I'm positive? It said, and more. And he prayed to Allah. He worshiped Allah. He only he wanted to keep on the 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 asurat the mustaqim, which is the straight path in his life. So I really don't see many differences. And I've written, you know, we, you can read my book and see some of the like the Trinity and the crucifixion, all these issues that rip Christians and Muslims apart. Really, I think even those are misunderstandings of the language of Arabic and Aramaic. Interestingly, a 2020 survey reported by Christian Post says that more than half of adults in America, including 30% of evangelical Christians, do not believe that Jesus is God. God's peace and blessings be upon all the prophets. This is Saleh Farooq reporting for Muslim News. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that more than 21 million Americans have faced hunger in early December. It was because the pandemic relief payments ran out and grocery prices rose. Low-income families soon could face more pressure with monthly child tax credit payments ending. Meanwhile, the Senate is deadlocked on legislation to extend the program backed by President Joe Biden. U.S. households in which sometimes or often there was not enough to eat 
reached 9.7% this month, according to consensus data collected between December 1st and the 13th. It's a five-month high, according to the Census Bureau's Household Pulse Survey. The United Kingdom recorded 119,789 new coronavirus cases Thursday. It is the highest daily count since the start of the pandemic. Italy also had the highest infection on Thursday since the pandemic began. Coronavirus infections also skyrocketed in Spain, with its health ministry reporting a staggering 72,912 new cases Thursday. Meanwhile, New York City is handing out free COVID-19 test kits to residents as testing centers have been hit with long queues amid a nation surge in cases. The United States is the world's hardest hit nation, reporting the most COVID cases and deaths. The company Intel apologized on Thursday to China after asking its suppliers to avoid sourcing from East Turkestan, what China calls the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. Intel said in a statement posted on the Chinese blogging website Weibo, its original intention was to ensure compliance with U.S. laws. The letter caused many questions and concerns among our cherished Chinese partners, which we deeply regret, Intel wrote. White House spokeswoman Jen Psaki said Thursday American companies should never feel the need to apologize for standing up for fundamental human rights or opposing repression. In the region, ethnic Uyghur Muslims have been subjected to years of abuse because of their identity, faith, and culture. Rights groups including Human Rights Watch, Justice for All, and Amnesty International, accuse Beijing of oppressing 12 million Uyghurs, who are mostly Muslims. President Joe Biden signed the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act into law on Tuesday. It bans imports from the Uyghur-majority Xinjiang Autonomous Region in northwest China. It also imposes sanctions on foreigners responsible for forced labor in the region. Biden thanked House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, and Democratic and Republican congressmen for their leadership. The bill was introduced by Senators Marco Rubio and Jeff Merkley last year. It cleared the House and Senate in recent weeks. The law ensures goods made with the slave labor of Uyghurs and other predominantly Muslim ethnic groups in occupied East Turkestan or Xinjiang do not enter the United States. Katie Wright, the mother of Dante Wright, speaks after former U.S. police officer Kim Potter was found guilty of two charges of manslaughter for shooting dead a 20-year-old African-American man. The moment that we heard guilty on the um, manslaughter one, emotions, every single emotion that you could imagine just running through your body at that moment, um, I kind of let out a yelp because it was built up in the anticipation of what was to come when, while we were waiting for the last few days. Now we've been able to process it. Um, we want to thank the entire prosecution team. We want to thank community support, um, everybody who's been out there that has supported us in this, this long fight for accountability. A school district in Glen Holden, Pennsylvania, is investing a black Muslim sixth grader humiliated by a teacher during class. Talia Holmes said on December 15th, her 11-year-old son, Jahir, was caught using his phone during school dismissal by a sixth grade math teacher. Holmes said, instead of confiscating the phone, the teacher forced him to get on his knees in front of his classmates who laughed and ridiculed him. She claims one of Jahir's classmates tried to stand up for him and got yelled at. Hindu extremists affiliated with India's ruling BJP party have taken a public oath to kill religious minorities. 
In an now viral video, Suresh Shavanke, editor-in-chief of a television channel, can be seen administrating an oath to a group of people to die for and kill to make India a Hindu nation. The group is seen doing the Nazi salute. The December 19th event in Delhi was organized by a Hindu hate group founded by Yogi Adityanath, Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh. The president of Jamiyat Ulama Hind, India's largest Muslim organization, accused the government of turning a blind eye to the open call for violence against Muslims. Another three-day conference held between December 17th and the 19th in the holiest of Hindu cities, Haridwar, organized by militant Hindutva leader Yati Narsing Hanand, and attended by the top religious leaders, Hindutva organizations issued a decree for the massacre of two million Muslims. The controversial Yati Narsing Hanand called for a war against Muslims and urged Hindus to take up weapons. Bosnian officials and religious leaders denounced Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban's comments about the integration of Bosnia into the European Union. Orban's spokesman Zoltan Kovacs tweeted, the challenge with Bosnia is how to integrate a country with two million Muslims. Some Bosniak parties called for a ban on Orban's plan to visit Sarajevo. The head of the Islamic community, Grand Mufti Hossein Kavasovic, called his comment xenophobic and racist. Kavasovic said allowing such ideologies to become the basis of policies for United Europe takes it back to a fascist era that led to the Holocaust and other horrific crimes. Turkey and Qatar agreed to jointly operate the Kabul International Airport in Afghanistan, diplomatic sources had told Andalou Agency on Thursday. After talks between committees from both countries, a memorandum of understanding was signed between the Turkish and Qatari companies to operate the airport. A joint committee of Turkish and Qatari officials will visit the Afghan capital to discuss the deal with the interim government. Flights were suspended at Kabul airport after the Taliban took control of the nation in August. U.S. troops destroyed equipment and a radar system at the facility before leaving the country. Rabbis from Muslim countries had spent two hours with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan at the presidential palace. Rabbi Mendi Chitrik, the Ashkenazi chief rabbi of Turkey, said Erdogan discussed a variety of topics. Chitrik told the Jewish Telegraphic Agency the president listened gracefully to all the rabbis and spoke against anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. Erdogan reiterated Turkey's position that denying the Holocaust is a crime against humanity. Chitrik added, Erdogan voiced support for the construction and renovation of synagogues in Turkey and the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Erdogan also addressed the state of Turkish-Israeli relations. Turkey was once a strong ally of Israel. Turkish-Israeli relations have soured under Erdogan's nearly 20-year rule. The military in France on Tuesday said that it killed militant leader connected to ISIS in West Africa. France maintains 4,800 soldiers deployed in Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. France's President Emmanuel Macron this summer announced the end of the military campaign in response to mounting criticism. Though Operation Barkhane is ending, not all French soldiers will be withdrawn. Saudi Arabia is pursuing the manufacturing of ballistic missiles with the help of China, CNN reported on Thursday. U.S. intelligence agencies said satellite images prove the Saudis have branched out to building rather than buying weapons from China. It could cause arc rival Iran to refuse pressure from the U.S., European Union, Israel, and other Middle Eastern countries to stop pursuing its nuclear and missile programs.
Satellite images purportedly show the Saudi missile manufacturing facility and test site. The Saudi missile program with Chinese technical aid could affect the Biden administration's effort to thaw relations with Beijing. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can watch previous episodes and more by visiting our YouTube and Facebook pages. For more content, please keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Assalamu alaikum and good night.